Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Amma ba'd. Can one of you get um, a marker, please? Preferably two. We get like red and black, please. Zakla khaira. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Amma ba'd. So, last class we were talking about the rules of Ra. And we finished the cases for tafkhim. How many did we mention? Eight scenarios for tafkhim. We also mentioned how many scenarios it would be made light in tarqiq. Does anyone remember? Four. Yes, correct. And then there are two ways where you can do either or. You can do tafkhim or tarqiq. So since we finished the eight of tafkhim, we tonight are going to be doing the four situations of tarqiq, inshallah. Jazakallahu khairan. Jazakallahu khairan. Jazakallahu Alright. So, this is going to be scenarios of tarqiq. Empty mouth. And we are talking about Ra. The four situations, inshallah. Number one. When the Ra is with a Kasra. Such as the word Kareem, such as the word Rih, Rih. Okay, so Kasra, Kasra. So Kareem, ri, ri, and not Kareem, Kareem, Ru, Ru. Yeah, you don't do it. Yeah, you know, you, you do you do it with the Qaf and you do Khli and Khli, but Ra, Kareem. So it's it's even difficult to make that full mouth. Rih, Karim, ri. So how do you ensure it's an empty mouth? You flatten out the tongue. Ri, 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 ra, ri, ru. Remember with the fatha, with the dhamma, it's full mouth. With a kasra, it's going to be empty mouth. So the second situation. When the ra has a sukun, and is preceded by an original kasra and not followed by an elevated letter. So what he's doing is he's, he's adding all these clauses because when you remove the clause, something else happens. When ra has a sukun, or I'll just say when ra is sakin. And is preceded by an original kasra. What does original kasra mean? It means an actual kasra as opposed to what we talked about last week, where it was a temporary kasra. So the, a normal kasra. Original kasra, normal kasra. And not followed Musta'ali letter. Musta'ali is like full now. Okay. So now, Ra is sakin. Before the Ra, there's a Kasra. It's an original kasra, meaning not the temporary kasra that we talked about, uh, meaning it's not a uh, imperative, uh, it's not the kasra of a amar, um, it's a normal kasra. 
Th this is to exempt that previous rule that we talked about before. And it, it is not followed by an elevated letter, meaning after the ra is not a musta'ali letter, full mouth letter. So example of this. Fir'aun. Fir'aun. So ra is sakin, fir. Preceded by an original kasra, it's in the same word, it's it's part of the actual word, fir'aun. As for like irji'i or irji'i, that kasra is not part of the actual raja'a. It's only so you can pronounce the uh, alif. That fa kasra is, that kasra is part of the actual word, so it's an original kasra. It's not followed by a musta'li letter. Musta'li letter is khusadat in qidh. I should have asked you guys what the musta'li letters are. So ayn is not part of that. So in this situation, ra is going to be considered empty mouth. Fir'aun, not fil. Fir'aun, fir'aun is a full mouth. Fir. It's fir'aun, fir'aun, fir'aun. In simple terms, you could just say, in most situations, it's going to be when ra is sakin preceded by a kasra. He's adding these different caveats and disclaimers because in rare situations, uh, when, when those aren't there, a different ruling comes. But the, the khulasa and summary of this one is ra sakin before it is a kasra. The third scenario, ra has a sakin. It's preceded by a non musta'li letter, which has a sakin, and that is preceded by a kasra. Okay. Alright. Ra has a sakin. It's preceded by a non elevated letter, meaning no khusabat and qidh is before it. Ra sakin. And that is preceded by a kasra. Okay. So, for example, hijr. Or hijr. 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 So Ra Sakin preceded by non Musta'li letter. So how do you know if it's a Musta'li letter or not? Qusa Baltin Qil. So Jim is not part of that. Non Musta'li letter, which is Sakin. So that that is, is missed there. Non Musta'li letter, that is Sakin. And that is preceded by a Kasra. Okay. In essence, the summary, if you want to, he, again, he's adding the caveats which makes it confusing. If you want it in a simplified version, but not intricate, meaning you're missing out some details, but simplified. You would say, Ra Sakin, before that is Sakin, before that is a Kasra. So, Ra Sakin, Ra Sakin before it is a Kasra. Ra sakin before it is a sakin before it is a kasra. Now all the other caveats there is to because there are rare situations that he is excluding through that. But like the normal tajweed books that I studied, this the simplified ones, it would just say ra wa ta kasra, ra sakin before it's a kasra, ra sakin before it's a sakin before it's a kasra. Very simple. And number four. When the ra has a sukun, it's sakin, ra sakin, and it is preceded by a yalin, yalin. 
You guys know what lean is? A or O. This is going to be A. Just leave it like that. Yeah, lean. The translator says uh, soft, yeah. But uh, lean is a, is a term. So I'll just leave it like that. Uh, and the example of this is... Anywhere where you'll have aid, aid. So meaning a fatha. After the fatha is yasakin. After that is a rasakin. Rasakin preceded by yasakin, preceded by a fatha. Now, what letter has the fatha? It doesn't matter. Right. So rasakin, before it's yasakin, then you have a fatha. That's a simplified understanding of it, right? Ra sakin. Before it is ya sakin. Before that is any letter with a fatha. Khayr. That ra is what we're looking at. Khayr. Kha is going to be full mouth. It's tafkhim in a kha. Why? It's not khayr. Khayr. On condition the ra is sakin. If you have khayrun, why would I pronounce that full mouth? Because it's dhammatain. Ra with a dhamma is going to be full mouth. But in this situation, if I pause here, that is now considered sakin. Before it is a ya sakin, before that is a fatha. Same thing, ra sakin, before that is a sakin, before that is fatha. La dayir, the magicians, they say la dayir to Fir'aun. Fir'aun said, I'm going to chop one arm off and then the opposite leg and then I'm going to hang you on a tree. And he did that to them. La dayir, no problem, go ahead, do what you can. That's, that was their attitude. So anyway. These are the four situations of empty mouth ra. It's compulsory to read ra with an empty mouth in these situations. Now I'm going to give you a brief summary. Very easy. You need to learn the caveats because when you look at the whole scenario, if you guys like look at the eight scenarios where you have to do full mouth, these and then the other two, you'll notice why these extra disclaimers are there. But what you really need to know in terms of your normal recitation is four scenarios of empty mouth ra. You can even note this down. Number one, ra has a kasra. Number two, ra sakin before it is a kasra. Number three, ra sakin before it is a sakin, before that is a kasra. Number four, Ra sakin, before that is a ya sakin, before that is a fatha, or what's known as ya lin. Ya lin is a, a, any khay, bay, any kind of a, that, that's a ya lin. A, a, o, qaw, baw, faw, all, all of these are leans. That's a wow lin. Ya lin, uh, a, bay, day, fay. Anything A, that is called lean, ya lean. So anytime you have a ra sakin preceded by ya lean, ya lean automatically means that it's going to be a ya sakin preceded by a fatha. That's how you get that A sound. So these are going to be the empty mouth ra. All right. So, 
I think we can pause here, inshallah. Next time, we will have the last two. And then we go back into the normal conversation of the sifat. So I think for the last three lessons, uh, we were on a tangent actually. Because what we're actually discussing are the sifat mutabwadda. We said all of the qualities of letters are broken into two. Those that have opposites, those that do not have opposites. Then we went into the opposite section. We didn't even cover those that don't have opposites. Within the opposite section, how many did we say? How many pairs? Four pairs. Th those who have opposites, so four pairs. Right? We did hamps and jahar. We did shidda, rakhawa, bainiya. And then what was number three? Isti'la and istifal. This is where we are. So we finish all those khusadat al or anything that's not khusadat al But then we did a tangent. We said there is an exception. There's a alif lam ra. These are sometimes full mouth, sometimes empty mouth. And we talked about when is alif empty mouth, when is it full mouth. Lam, when is it a full mouth? Like Allah, when is it empty mouth, normal lam. And then we went into ra, and ra has so many different rulings that uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna finish it in the next lesson, inshallah. Um, and then we will go back to the discussion where we have the last two. Remember this. No, there, there's four. There's four. It's the last one. Last of the of the opposites, the pairs. Hams Jahar we did. Shiddara Khawa Bainiya. Isti'ala Istifal. And then we have Al Itbaq and Al Infitah. Uh, thereafter, we go into those qualities that don't have opposites. And then we go into more finer details, inshallah. That is for uh, the rest of the winter months, inshallah, going into the summer. So um, you guys do take some time and revise, inshallah. The more you revise, the better you'll understand. Allow your theory to be in accordance to your knowledge. And you guys are doing well, but sometimes I feel like you guys are taking my pointers and fixing it, your recitation through my pointers, which is good. But you should also know why you're doing it. Like if I say, what's the ruling here? You're like, okay. There's eight times where it has to be full mouth, four times where it has to be empty mouth, two times where it's optional. It should be like that, inshallah. Right? That's ideal. So if you guys can do that, inshallah, that would be really good. And in a normal institution, you would get really good marks in your Tadweed class, right? We had to, for, in order to apply for Qiraat Saba'a to become Qadi, you had to have over a 70 in recitation. And then you have to have over 70 in your uh, class, the, the test. So when it came to recitation, they would like, what do, what do you call it? Like, uh, uh, what is it? Like they, they guard that, that 70 mark. So it will be super easy for you to go to like 50 to 60. But once you get to 70, for some reason to get 71, you'd have to be like really good. And most will be like at 69. And there's a very rare one or two guys that like were really good. They would get like 80, 90. So it's like it, once you pass that mark, it's really easy to go up. But at 70, I had a 71. I had a 71. That's still feel. I'm ashamed, but I got better. I got better at Tajweed more. My my book, the like the the grade in Jazariya, 99. Alhamdulillah. Right. So I knew my stuff, but they, I'm telling you, they they used to like really like. Guard that, like gatekeep that that seventy. Come on, my own ustad, right? So if if he liked you, it's like all right, seventy one, because you know, like once you hit seventy, you can get in, and especially if you got the marks. And he told me he was like, you got the marks, you can get in, but like you really want to get in. He he would try to stop people from getting in too, because they would test you. They would like, and then there's a, a hidden condition. There's another condition that you can't get into major trouble. In the mother's house. So if you're known, you know, like you know, a, a slacker, you don't do in other do well in other classes, uh, you don't come for salah on time, then you won't be allowed to join the qiraat. Then you have to write a formal letter to the qari. It was a, I had a different teacher. You had to write a formal formal letter to our qari. And then the hidden condition is you have to develop a relationship with him beforehand. One guy had all of the marks. He wrote the formal letter. And then uh, Qadi Sahib called everyone together when he was deciding who comes in the class or not. And he was like, who are you? Like, I don't know you. 
I can't let you come in the class if I don't know you. And so then the guy, he didn't even try. If he, if he really pressed and he kept on asking, he could have got in, but he, he didn't try after that. So I had to, you know, spend some time seeing him, giving him gifts and stuff beforehand. It's not bribing. It's just like I want to get close to the teacher, you know. It worked, alhamdulillah. Now, uh, you know, I'm here standing before you teaching. I wouldn't be teaching you to do it if it wasn't otherwise, right? 